G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today's video is about having a look at each of the 18 clubs and coming up with who I think is that club's most underrated player going into 2024. Now, this is obviously a little bit subjective. It's based on perception. And so this is obviously gonna be based on my opinion and my understanding of how much players are rated for a start. So as we go along, by all means, please let me know in the comments, anyone you agree with or disagree with for the various clubs. Before I get into the crux of this video, I do wanna shout out the two newest members of the True Footy YouTube channel. We got Sean Ducks and Mish SWB4, who recently joined up, and I wanted to say I really appreciate you, and it's good to have you aboard. So let's go through the 18 clubs alphabetically this time, and before I get into it, make sure you have hit that subscribe button for plenty of AFL content. All right, let's crack in with the Adelaide Crows to start off in typical fashion. The most underrated Adelaide Crow, based in my perspective, is probably going to be Mitch Hinge, who really took his game to the next level, I think, certainly in 2023, but generally speaking, I think it was a real breakout year for him. He sort of emerged as this fast, rebounding defender who I think can play on the wing as well. Increased his output by five touches a game that went at 78%. Five marks a game, five rebound 50s. Former delisted free agent, if I'm not mistaken. I do remember him being at the Brisbane Lions, so a nice cheap pickup for the Adelaide Crows, and he's become a very handy player for them. For the Brisbane Lions, I would probably highlight Jack Payne, the key defender who really emerged during the 2023 season, and he's finally got his game tally around about the 50 game mark, which is generally where players start to take their game to the next level, and we saw him do that in 2023. But, you know, in previous years, there was guys to contend with, like the obvious Harris Andrews, Marcus Adams, who is now retired, of course. Uh, even Darcy Gardner at one stage, I think, was ahead of him in the pecking order. But now Jack Payne has established himself as, you know, one of the more improved players in 2023 from my perspective. Then I want to talk about Nick Newman, who I think is actually a very consistent player for the Carlton Footy Club. They probably have a handful of options there. Cottrell is probably one that came to mind as well. But Nick Newman seems to have a profile, particularly if you, you follow AFL Fantasy. But in general terms, I think his output is actually good and has been consistent for a little while now. So much so that in 2023, he actually came second, if I'm not mistaken, in Carlton's Best and Fairest Award. He's a pretty reliable defender. Generally, I think he takes the opposition small four, so he's got a bit of versatility there, but he also wins plenty of the footy as well, averaging about 23 and a half disposals, 80% efficiency, and seven and a half marks a game. So you can't argue with that output. Picking an underrated player for the Premiers is a little bit tricky. Obviously, when a team wins a premiership, a lot of their collective profile seems to build up. But the one I'm going to probably nominate is Bo McCreary. I got picked up in my bold predictions video for maybe underselling McCreary a little bit, and that's possibly true to some extent. I more commented on his ability to hit the scoreboard. He kicked 17 goals from 25 games, average about 10 touches, but I think what he does off the ball is just as impressive from what I've seen. His defensive pressure is fantastic and also pretty young. He's only just hit the 60 game mark, which suggests that he might take his game to the next level next year, but is already an understated player at Collingwood. For the Essendon Footy Club, again, I'm not sure how underrated he is. From my perspective, he is. I'm going to go with Mason Redman, who actually made the All-Australian squad of 40 this year as a medium-sized defender and was obviously in the headlines as well for potentially going home to Adelaide, decided to stay at the Bombers and sign a five-year contract. But I believe he also came third in the best and fairest this year behind Zach Merritt and Kyle Langford, and I think that backs up a previous season where he came fourth. But he is elite by foot. Disposal efficiency specifically by foot was at 82 2 percent this year, which is ridiculous. And when you consider that three of four possessions that Redmond gets, he actually kicks the ball rather than handballs it. Those stats alone indicate that he is a very impactful player, and I think an underrated one at Essendon. For Fremantle, I'd probably nominate Brennan Cox as their most underrated player, to be completely honest, uh, now that Lockie Shaws has left. But, you know, another player that made the All-Australian squad, I think he's been rewarded with a seven-year contract to stay at Fremantle, which, to my math, makes him the most contracted player at Fremantle, or the longest contracted, even ahead of Sean Darcy and and Luke Jackson, but he's a very reliable player down back. Got a little bit of versatility to swing forward as well, but he's been a pretty good player for a while now. Will he ever actually be that All-Australian key back? I just, well, there's a lot of competition for it, but he's already nudging it, and he's quite young as well, taken in the 2016 draft. For Geelong, there's probably a few candidates, but I still think that Brian Myers might be a little bit underrated when you consider, yes, he had a very good year, and I think a lot of people are vaguely aware of that, but how many people know that he actually had the second most goal assists of all time this season and was by far and away the winner of that category this year. He had 19 touches a game and on top of that, as well as using the ball well inside 50, setting up goals, his defensive pressure is also really strong. He was ninth in the league 
across the entire league for scoring involvements. And while he only kicked seven goals, that might have worked against him for all Australian calculations. But generally in every other metric, he was kind of elite for the role that he plays. For the Gold Coast Suns, this one might seem lame to people who already know how good he is, but I do still think that Ben Ainsworth might be their most underrated player considering his output. So he gets about uh, 18 touches a game, kicks a goal a game as well as a half forward. So 21 goals from 21 games, I think. But he's, he's a really strong endurance athlete, plays as a bit of a connective piece between the midfield and the forward line while also hitting the scoreboard himself. And he's heralded for more uh, time at stoppages under Hardwick in his first season in 2024. So we might see him win a little bit more of the footy as he's coming up as that extra player at two stoppages. For GWS, this guy might actually be the most underrated gun on this list, and that's Connor Iden. There's a few to choose from GWS, so I decided with Iden. He's 193 centimeters, 92 kilos, so a nice sort of in-between height. And why that's nice, because normally that's kind of a negative if you're an in-betweener. That being said, he's pretty good on both talls and smalls. We know he's always had a good athletic profile. Uh, that being said, you know, his, his consistency on playing on dangerous opposition forwards, but also the ability to use the ball has come a long way from what I can tell when he was rewarded with sixth place in the GWS Best and Ferris in a team that was obviously, you know, one point off a grand final. He's 11th in the league for one percenters. He's, he's well-rounded, he's busy. I really like this kid and I think if GWS go deep again, he will become, you know, potentially an outside chance for an All-Australian. It was also competitive picking a single player for Hawthorne to be underrated, but I have gone with Connor Nash, who was a bit of a surprise packet in 2023. I didn't really have that much of an opinion of him, a little bit of ignorance going into this year, but particularly postseason, I've noticed how much his output increased this year. So 24 disposals a game for a 196 centimeter midfielder. That's an increase of eight and a half disposals. He also averages nearly five tackles and five clearances a game. And I, I realized this video isn't about players who took a big leap last year, but you'll see a trend where some players have a really good season and then their reputation seems to lag behind that. But I would say Connor Nash is still underrated at this po current point in time. He's a good defensive midfielder while also winning plenty of the ball himself. For Melbourne, I think that player is probably Cade Chandler. When you consider as well how many players at Melbourne do have a profile because they have won a premiership and they got so many stars in that team. But I think this guy was probably a little bit underrated to me as well before doing a lot of postseason research and realizing how good a season he actually had. So he kicked 24 goals this year as a pressure forward. That's great going. 73% disposal efficiency. Averages about 14 pressure acts a game. So he's a busy player who hits the scoreboard as well and really only broke into the team this year. If I'm not mistaken, he'd never kicked a goal before uh, kicking 24 this year and he played 10 games going into this season so a bit of a breakout year for him and again profile probably just going to lag behind a little bit for North Melbourne, I'll highlight Bailey Scott as having a career best season in 2023 and his reputation probably doesn't quite match up with the output we saw this year, but he had a second straight season with a top three finish in North Melbourne's best and fairest. Played every game this year, mostly on a wing and a half back from memory and average about 22 disposals a game. Had a really good performance against Sydney in round 10 where he had 33 touches and 12 inside 50s. Become a very consistent player. I'd imagine he gets better over time because he's still quite a young player, but a bit of an underrated Rue there. For Port Adelaide, I think the underrated player there is probably Willem Drew. And it's not hard to be sidelined in a Port Adelaide midfield that consists of some stars like Zach Butters and Connor Rosie. And if he is the third, fourth or fifth banana in that midfield, that is still, you know, pretty good going. But he is kind of an inside ball winner and has also applied a bit of a trade as a tagger. And he did that with a bit of success in the final that they lost to the Brisbane Lions. He kept Neil to 19 touches and five clearances. That's even more impressive when you consider that he had 20 and eight. But he's quietly just been a best 22 player at Port Adelaide for a little while now. But when you really crack into the numbers there, he's a bit of an underrated player, I would say. Now we go with Richmond. And I probably haven't focused on this guy enough when analyzing their team for next year. But I think Samson Ryan might be a bit of an underrated young gun. And again, I think he had a really good season this year. You know, I think he spent 22 mostly in the VFL. This year he played 14 games, kicked 12 goals. But when you factor in, he's also doing that as a second ruck in that team, getting about 12 hitouts a game. I think this guy might even be a more reliable long-term key forward option or a ruck forward option than their new recruit in Jacob Kaczynski. I'm not too sure, but he looks really promising to me. I think he stands at 206 centimeters and seems to have a bright future at AFL level. For the Saints, I'm also gonna go with a bit of a young gun. And I think this guy does have a profile and I think the Saints all know how good Naziah Wanganeen Miller is. That being said, I think he's good enough where it's going to be a case of in a year or two, everyone will know just how good 
He is. He had 23 and a half disposals a game, went at about 76% efficiency, full rebound 50s, about 450 meters gained. Those are very healthy numbers as a sort of rebounding defender who was just playing in his third season. Forgive me, it was his second season. He is going into his third season. So I think to build up the resume that he has so far and play well in you know the best backline in the competition last year, I think there's more than just green shoots with Wang- Wanganeen Miller. I think he is an underrated gun of the comp. For the Sydney Swans, that player that is most underrated might be James Rowbottom. And again, maybe I just feel like I've kind of underrated James Rowbottom. But he had a terrific year this year with seven and a half tackles a game. Like Those are very, very strong numbers. He's been a reliable player for them for a while. He only gets about the 18 touches a game, but obviously as a defensively minded midfielder, really gets the job done. And I think when you factor in, he's only 23. That's the, probably the part that I keep forgetting. What he's producing at AFL level is very good already and he did finish top three in their best and fairest. For West Coast, again, probably a few options. Being an Eagles fan, it's easy to think of them. However, I'm going to pick out Jamie Cripps in this. I think Jamie Cripps is the most underrated West Coast Eagle on our list. And when you factor in, he's ranked fourth in the league for tackles inside 50, I think as well what he adds to West Coast from a defensive point of view and a defensive running point of view is more than just the goals he kicks. However, I think he ended the season in career best form, picked up three Brownlow votes against the Bulldogs, if I'm not mistaken, with five goals in that game. He had 11 tackles as a forward against North Melbourne. I think this guy sets the standard in a lot of ways for West Coast and his profile, even amongst Eagles fans, isn't fair compared to how good he actually is. And finally, for the Western Bulldogs, again, I'm going to pick out a player who I'm sure some people think is very good already, uh, but there might be a little bit of ignorance to it, and that is Ed Richards, because I think this guy has quietly become a bit of an understated gun of the comp, and doesn't have a huge profile, although it's starting to get there. Like I said, with sometimes with young players, their reputation kind of lags behind their actual performance. But he had about 21 touches a game this year, six rebound 50s, 76% efficiency, 430 meters gain. Those are all really strong numbers numbers, four and a half score involvements too. And I think he came third in their best and fairest. So obviously that highlights how important he is to the Western Bulldogs. And as he matures, I think he was taken in a 2016 or 17 draft. I think it might've been 17 actually. He is just starting to hit his straps. And therefore I think Projects is a very, very good player and an important player for the Western Bulldogs. There you have it guys. Those are my most underrated plays in the comp. Let me know who you agree with or disagree with, whether it be your club or another. As always, I like to hear from you and it helps me get better at what I do. But for now, I'll thank you for being subscribed. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.